Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are once more welcome to our fifth series of running lectures on the journalist and the law. In the fourth session, we talked about the three heads of theft under Cameroonian law. Simple theft, special theft, and aggravated theft. In that session, we discussed the first two, simple theft and special theft. Today, we are going to round off with the third category, that is aggravated theft. Aggravated theft is stealing by day or by night. That is just like simple theft, but aggravated by the presence of certain ingredients, certain circumstances. One, by the use of force. When you still use force, this force could be physical or it could be psychic. Physical force means you can push somebody, you can blow the person, or you can even just touch the person. That is enough to fulfill that requirement of force, physical force. When you do that and you steal, that is aggravated theft. There's also psychic force. That is threatening somebody or frightening the person. In other countries, that is called extortion or blackmail. But blackmail and extortion do not exist as such in our penal law. Blackmail and extortion are just a form of aggravated theft. So you steal by using force, that is an ingredient of aggravated theft. Number two, bearing of weapons. You steal while bearing weapons. Weapons could be any instrument that could be used to inflict injury on somebody. It's not only an AK-47 or a pistol, even a knife, even a screwdriver. Whatever instrument that you could use to inflict injury on somebody, when you use that instrument during, you know, when you are stealing from somebody, it is an aggravating circumstance. It becomes aggravated theft. Some people call it robbery in other countries. And even some journalists say there's a robbery incident. But in Cameroon, there is no offense like robbery. That is just a form or a species of aggravated theft. Another one is climbing in, breaking in, and the use of a false key. When you break into a house and steal, in some countries they call it burglary, but there is no offense like burglary in Cameroon. So it is a form or a species of aggravated theft. If you steal by breaking into a house, you climb through the fence and get into the house, or use a false key, that is an aggravating circumstance. So it becomes aggravated theft. But let me explain a little bit about this false key. What is a false key? A false key is the imitation of the real key. It means that if you take somebody's key and go to claim in it and get an imitation of it and open the man, you open the man's door and steal from his home or office, that is aggravated theft. But you can use even the original key of the house. If you stole the key, the original key of the house, you, st you steal somebody's key and you use the same key to open the man's house and steal from it, it becomes aggravated theft. False key also means that somebody can give you his key to go to his house and get something. Go to his house, open the parlor or the sitting room and collect something from there. But you go to his home, instead of doing what he asked you to do, you open other doors. Even though he gave you his key, that key becomes now a false key. It becomes an aggravating circumstance. It becomes, the theft now becomes aggravated theft. The last one is stealing using a motor vehicle. You, you take a motor vehicle to somebody's house to steal. When that happens, it becomes aggravated theft. What is a motor vehicle? A motor vehicle is one that is engine propelled. It means that if you use a bicycle, 
it is not a motor vehicle. If you use a hand pull car, what they call a truck, it is not a motor vehicle. But if you use a motorbike, you use a car to go to somebody's house to steal and carry the property away, that is the use of a motor vehicle. But take note, if you steal, if you go there without a car and you steal and you get into another car and get away and run away, it becomes not aggravated theft, but simple theft. The vehicle must be used in stealing, not to be used to escape. So if you only use the car to escape, it will not be aggravated theft, it will be simple theft. Even the force that I mentioned a while ago, the force must be happen before. It must precede the stealing or substantially contemporaneous. That is around the same time as the stealing, that is when the force that you use becomes an aggravating circumstance. But if you use force after you have stolen and you are trying to escape and somebody tries to block your way and you hit the person, that will not be an aggravating circumstance. It will be simple theft, all the same. So, to summarize, we say that aggravated theft is stealing by day or by night using force, bearing weapons, by climbing in, breaking in, or using a force key and also through the use of a motor vehicle. So take note, we don't have any offense called burglary in Cameroon. We don't have any offense called blackmail or extortion. We don't have any offense called robbery per se. These are just ingredients of aggravated theft. So what is the punishment for aggravated theft? Before 1990, all cases of aggravated theft were punishable with death by hanging or by firing squad. But after 1990, the law was revised. Today, aggravated theft is punishable just the same way as simple theft and special theft, but the punishment is doubled. That is to say, if simple theft and special theft, the maximum is 10 years for aggravated theft, the maximum is now 20 years by virtue of section 320, paragraph 2 of the Penal Code. But in the course of your act of you stealing and somebody dies, the aggravated theft will not just be doubled, the punishment will not just be doubled, but you will be sentenced to death by hanging or by firing squad. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you now know what aggravated theft is and the ingredients that make this species, this head of theft to become aggravated. If you enjoyed what we are doing, let us know, write to us, send your messages, your worries, queries, or contributions to the email address that appears below the screen and also to the telephone number that is on the screen right now. That number may also be used for your WhatsApp messages. Until we meet again next time, thank you very much for listening and watching. Goodbye.